Welcome back to Nature Matters Academy. I am Dr. Jenny and today we're going to be talking about plant habits. And plant habits are really easy. They're just basically the really big categories that we use to describe different types of plants. So we're looking at um, characteristics like how tall is the plant? What is the plant shape? Is the plant woody or is it more of a soft green stem? And so this week we're going to be looking at seven different types. You can actually break these down into smaller categories. We're going to keep it general. So the first plant habit that we're going to discuss is a tree. And most of you know what a tree is, but let's go ahead and describe it. So it's a perennial, first of all, which means that it grows and lives over multiple years. It, ha it is woody, and as you can see, all the bark on the tree makes it woody. And then it also has a single stem coming up from the base, and we call that a trunk. So here's an example of a tree. It is a pinion pine, and um, trees typically are gonna be um, around four to five meters tall. Anything less than that um, could potentially be called a shrub, kind of depending on the species. So the second uh, plant habit that we are gonna discuss is called a shrub. And a shrub is still a perennial, just like a tree is. It still has woody stems, just like a tree does. The main difference between a tree and a shrub is that there are a lot of stems from the base. So I don't know if you can see this base here, but there's a lot of woody stems coming out essentially from the ground. And then also it's much shorter than a tree. So it's gonna be less than four to five meters. And uh, some trees do have multiple stems coming up from the base. A lot of juniper trees, for example, have this multiple stem um, type of look. So it's not always the best indicator, but in general, you can differentiate a tree and a shrub from the number of stems arising from the base and also the height. So this plant um, habit is a type of forb. It's actually a mustard plant. And so what makes a forb a forb, let me move my leg here, is that you can see it doesn't have a woody base and that's really important. Also, it is considered to be herbaceous, which herbaceous means, that's my dog Fabry. Um, herbaceous means that essentially it dies back in winter. So whenever the months gets cold, then what's on top of the ground dies off and then it comes back next year. Uh, forbs can be perennials, they can be annuals, they can be biennials. So um, that really doesn't matter. It's just this idea that it's not woody and it dies back in winter. This is typically gonna cover your flowering plants. So our next plant habit is going to be the grasses. And the grasses are very easy to distinguish. First of all, they don't have the large showy flowers. They do not have a woody base and they also die back in winter. What's different is that grasses have a very distinct bulge right where the leaves come off from the stems. And also the leaves tend to be, um, they're, they're very narrow and they have parallel veins. So that's what's going to differentiate a grass from say a forb. Our next plant habit are the vines. And the vines are mainly differentiated by having really long stems. So this is called vine weed. This is also really common in the Southwest. And um, vines in general um, are very diverse in the fact that they can be um, herbaceous or they can be woody. They can be sprawling, climbing. Um, they can be annuals or perennials. Really the main characteristic that differentiates a vine from another plant is the fact that it is, has these really long stems. Our next plant habit is lichen, and you can argue that lichen isn't actually a plant, but we're not gonna go there because lichen is everywhere and it's important that we know what it is and how to identify it. So lichen is really unique in that it's actually two organisms in one. So basically what it is, it's a fungus and either an alga or a cyanobacterium that basically live in symbiosis together. And lichen basically always grows on some type of solid object. So it's usually either growing on rocks or on trees. You'll very, very rarely see it just on soil alone. And what um, makes lichen a little bit different from moss is that you can see that it's, it's, it's very crusty and it's not soft at all to the touch. So our last plant habit is moss. And moss appears a lot like lichen in that it grows on a solid object like rock or bark. It's also very small and simple. 
The main thing that differentiates it is that moss is going to be very soft to the touch, whereas lichen is very crusty. 